Right. So, uh, a lot of you have been asking me what's the story with the bow. And this is the bow. That's just a stand. So, first things first, you'll see that it has this kind of loop hanging off it. Okay. My arm goes through that. And that's how I hold the bow. Okay. The idea being, when you draw the bow back and let it go, see the way I'm gripping it there? When you're gripping a bow like that, okay, I'm going to do it head on so you can see. My hand has, I don't fucking know, a hundred different muscles in it. And you can tweak it that way, 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 that way. There's a million different one angles that I can turn that on. I don't want that, okay? So this is a, a mechanical release, it's called. I'll give you a close-up of it now in a minute, but I need it to pull back the string. So when you're actually drawing the bow, that's the grip you want. It's not really a grip. I'm pulling with this. So just make sure that's in right. Yeah. So I, I'm pulling with that, but you see the way my hand isn't grasping it. Now the idea here is that you take all that potential for waving it around out of your hand. Okay? So that's the idea of the loop. So you hold it. Sorry. Click that in. So that's how you hold it when you're firing when you're pulling it back. Okay, so your hand isn't closed, it's open. And the only thing that's stopping it from falling is the fact that I'm pulling the drawstring back. Now, I can't, I, well I can, I could fire this, I could let this go, but that's called dry firing it. And I've done that twice already, and it makes shite of the bow. Because when you pull the string back and let it go, you're launching one of these things. I think it's 175 feet per second, and that's a shit ton of energy to go from this bow into this arrow. And if that arrow isn't in, and it wasn't there when I was pulling back, if you fire it, all the energy that should go into propelling the arrow 175 feet per second, all that energy, instead of going into the arrow, goes into the bow. And you can literally break the bow. You can damage it beyond repair by doing that. Now, I didn't damage it even though I've done it twice. And the reason for that is this particular bow, it's a Diamond Edge Pro, Diamond Edge Pro, something like that, a Diamond Edge Pro, from Height are the manufacturers. But one of the best things about this for a starter's bow is that you can set the poundage between, I think it's five pounds and 70 pounds. Now mine's set somewhere in the middle, it's set at about 40, and I'm gonna have to work my way up closer to 70. Now the idea being that if you, if this was a weighing scale, so you know the way you can clip into a weighing, you know the way you get, what are they called? For weighing your bag at an airport, you click it in and you lift it up and it comes up on the little screen what weight it is. Well you can get them for bow strength, for, for bows. You can actually probably use just the, the travel one. You click it into that, you pull it back and as you're pulling back it would tell you what weight you're pulling back. And as I was saying, this can do from, I think it's between, it's adjustable to five to 70 pounds. Now, as I said, ideally the higher it is, the more power goes into it, the faster it goes, the further it goes, and the straighter it will fly. But the reason mine is set to 40 is because if I was pulling 70 pounds from scratch, I'd be fucking pulling like fuck like this, and the bow would be waving all over the place. And as you can imagine, as with a rifle when you're aiming it, you want it dead fucking steady, okay? It moving at all. So a millimetre on the front, let's say if this was the front of the barrel of a gun, a millimetre to the left, if your target is 200 feet away, you've missed the target by fucking 10 feet. And the same principle applies to archery, okay? But that was the strap I tried to explain to you. Okay, so that's the strap. The strap is loosely connected around this, which is called the riser. So from here to here, the frame, this is machined aluminium. The frame from there to there is called the riser. This bit jutting out at the end and this bit jutting out at the end is called a limb. Okay, so they're both limbs. Then on the strings, you've only got one string. These are cables, so you'll see they crisscross here. So there and there, they crisscross. And then these are called cams. So this is what propels the arrow forward and this is what gives it its power essentially. So, you'll see when I click this in, sorry, on the string, the bow string, there's a little loop called a D loop for obvious reasons. And then this guy 
clicks into that and then I'm just I'm gonna pull gently not dry fire it. and you see this thing here the thumb when I pull that back it comes off okay so it's um, a mechanical re release this is called or a thumb release and the idea being that you're not again it, it's, it's all about taking the micro movements out of the bow so when you fire this thing with one of these the bow just goes from here phew, gone but if you pull it back with your fingers, you can imagine the amount of, you know, are you, do you let go of it fast enough? Are you pulling it left or right? This just keeps everything set. So bowstring, cables, D, or D loop, and then the cams. You'll notice the cams aren't circular, top and bottom. And the idea of the cams not being circular is, if they were circular, when you pull back the bow, they just spin, but as you pull it back, It'd be hard, 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 hard to pull back, and then you get to full draw, and it's it'd still be hard. It'd you'd be holding all this pressure and trying to aim, but that's not the case with these because they're oval or oblong. What happens is as I pull back, it's hard, 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 and all not all the pressure, but ninety percent of the pressure is gone. Okay, now the next bit here is so. I'm going to touch my nose off the string, like so, and I'm going to close my left eye, and you'll see that my eye and the little tube, I, I don't have a free hand, the little tube, see my nose is touching it there? Okay, so I'm not looking through the tube, but if I can do this right without fucking letting this thing go, there's a hole in that little piece there, and I'm looking through that, and then on the other end, there's a bigger circle, okay? You might be able to see my right eye looking through it. Okay, so I line up that little hole here that I'm touching with my nose. That's called the peep sight. You line that circle up with the circle that's above my index finger here. And I, I'm going to take the pressure off here and give you a close-up of a few pieces, okay? So bear with me. Okay, so that's actually the hole that I'm looking through. But you can see this is all waving around. Now, when I pull that out to here, this goes straight and I look through that little hole there if you can see it there that little hole and I line it up that little circle and that little circle I line up and then you have pins here that denote the different distances but I get into that again and while I'm there you might be able to see here there's a little bubble level like on a spirit level and that obviously tells you when the bow is, is vertical so that way the bubble goes that way this way the bubble goes that way this thing here is called a whisker biscuit. That's the, it's actually, that's a bad example. This thing here is an arrow rest. Now, the type of arrow rest that it is, is a whisker biscuit. And your arrow basically pushes in there. And then, see this yellowy piece in the end with the hole at the end of it, that little kind of divot indentation? That's the piece that actually clicks in. And I'll move over to the mic here you'll probably hear it, there's a, there's a clicking sound it makes as it goes in. And that bow is essentially armed now. Okay, so you have your riser, your two limbs, your two cams, your two cables that crisscross in the middle here and here, your bowstring and the D-loop. This thing here coming out, as this string is pulled back, I'll get back to my original position, as the string is drawn back and it let let's go this basically stops it from interfering with the cables it also silences the bow as well bows are made to be very light very strong very inflexible you don't want any of this to move when it shouldn't and to be silent the idea being if you sneak up on a i don't know a flock of fucking geese or pheasant or whatever it is you want to be able to pick off as many as you can without startling the rest of them Okay, um, I'll give you a close-up. Oh, actually, no, before I give you a close-up of this guy, I'll explain about this guy. And before I attach it, see the way the top of it there bends? Okay, there's a rubber piece here, and that's actually a weighted piece. And the whole thing screws into the frame of this. Okay. Like so. And that acts as a stabiliser. Now, you'll see in the Olympics... They'll have one coming out the front and they'll have one coming off this side and one coming off 
that side. And it's just to steady the whole thing up because the, the more movement that's in this, the more inaccuracy there is, okay? Uh, I never gave you a close-up of this guy, so bear with us again. So hopefully you'll be able to see the D-loop. Now, this is the, the little piece of gear. So see this piece here? This piece here, have a look at that. You see it opening when I pull down this thumb piece. See the way it opens? Okay, so you actually hold this upside down. You click that in there, if I can get this. See that? Like so. You, now, see the way my finger is off the trigger? So it's the same with rifle discipline. You never walk around with your hand on the trigger because you could accidentally pull and bang. If it's drawn, the arrow will fire and you don't have to draw a rifle. So if you just tip that, the, the arrow will fire. So you have it here, nice and safe out of the way. You draw your bow back. You line up, you put your nose in the string. You have a couple of different anchor points that I'll talk about in another episode. And then, on, then and only then when you're ready to fire, do you move your thumb down onto the trigger. I'm going to ease up on this because I don't want to dry fire it again. And this is just a handy little stand. You can see it just opens and closes like so. You hook it along that and then you can stand it up. Right, uh, that'll do for the first one. Chin, eh? Oh, fuck it. Well, we're here. Little crack. Zoom out. This is where we are. All the way around. And I'll catch you soon.